Good morning and welcome to the Kingdom Seekers radio broadcast where Jesus is Lord. We praise God for another day, for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please get your Bibles, get a highlighter, get a pen, get something to write with. I have a wealth of information to disperse today. Open your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'll give you time to get your paper and your paper, your highlight and your pen. If you're a regular follower of this broadcast, you know you already need these items. I am a minister of the gospel, a servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I stand in one of the fivefold ministry gifts according to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Jesus, when he ascended up on high, when he rose from the dead, the Bible says he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I stand in the office of a teacher. And that's just an anointing or grace that's upon my life. Doesn't make me anything. Doesn't make me all of that. It's just my assignment. And so, as I minister the word of God to you, there's going to be an anointing available. Watch this. For you. Not for me. For you. The anointing or the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. The ability of God himself coming upon a person enabling him or her to do what he could not possibly do without the power of God. Acts chapter 10 verse 38, the Bible says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Watch this. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for or because God was with him. Acts 10 38. Jesus himself said in Luke 4 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. That means this is the reason. Watch this, folks. This is why the Holy Ghost was on him. He said to preach, glory to God, to preach. He said the word preach three times in those next two verses. He also talked about deliverance, opening the sight of the blind, set at liberty those that are bruised, broken down. In other words, Jesus is saying the spirit of God, the anointing, the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God is upon me to set you free. It was for you, not for Jesus. He didn't need to be delivered. He was already delivered. He didn't need to be healed. He was already healed. Are you listening to me? So when the anointing shows up, it's for you. It's for you. So as I minister the word today, receive that. Just receive it. Just thank God for the ministry gift and feed upon it. In fact, you should do that with your, with your pastor. When you're feeding upon the word every Sunday morning and midweek Bible study, receive it. That, that's the, Your pastor is God's gift to you. That's exactly what he or she is. God's gift to you. And I honor my bishop, Dr. Glenn A. Staples as well as this great man of God in the studio, the Apostle and Dr. Anthony T. Mays, and his lovely wife. I thought about this just this morning. I don't know if I've ever said that. But God bless Lady Mays. God bless you, First Lady, wherever you are out there in radio world. We thank God for you. All right, folks, did you get your Bibles? Let's do this real quickly. Our preparation declarations. Please repeat these after me. I am a citizen of the kingdom. Please say that. I am a citizen of the kingdom. You notice we've been saying this for the last several weeks. This is going to resonate in your spirit. It's going to get down in your consciousness. And when revelation comes, no one's going to be able to stop you. Nobody. Once you find out who you really are, <laughs> that you're God's child, born from above. Wonderful revelation for the born again believer to have. Number two, I am developing a kingdom mindset. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm developing it. That's why we say this all the time. That's why we read it. I'm developing it. I'm working on something. Tell somebody, I'm working on something. I'm working. Sometimes I'm in the gym, Apostle Maze. I have my, my headphones on, mm -hmm. and the guys want to joke and talk. And I'd be telling somebody, I said, I said, man, I'm in school. <laughs> they, I don't know what they think I'm listening to. I'll show them the video I'm listening to. I might be, it might be Dr. Miles Monroe. It might be uh, mm -hmm. Kenneth Hagan or somebody. I said, look, you see that word right there? It says school. I said, I'm in school. I'm working on something. See, folks, what I teach you, I practice. It's called uh, teaching by precept and example. I'm not just playing church. This is real to me. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. I'm developing a kingdom mindset. Number three, I will speak the word of the kingdom. Please say that. I will speak the word of the kingdom. Glory to God. And the last one I think is, oh, they're all important, but this one I think is so vital because it keeps us focused, it keeps us balanced, and it keeps us humble. And it says that it's the Father that lives in me. He's doing the work. 
say that. It's the Father that lives in me. He's doing the work. If you're not careful, you'll start thinking it's you. It's, no, it's the Father that's in me. I started out by saying that I'm anointed with the Holy Ghost. That's God's Spirit. It's Him. He gets the glory. I get no credit for it. None. I, this is my assignment. That's it. To God be the glory. Amen. Father, I pray your word over the listeners today. From the book of Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, I thank you that these are apostolic prayers. Your servant, the Apostle Paul, prayed them. And if he can pray them, I stand in agreement and I pray them over the people that you would grant them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that you would open up the eyes of their understanding, Father, enlighten them, give them comprehension and spiritual understanding, that they may know what is the hope of your calling, that they may know the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints, and that they may know the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and the same power that raised us from the dead of trespasses and sin. I pray that you'd grant them according to your riches and glory to be strengthened with might by your spirit in their inner man, so that Christ may dwell richly in their hearts by faith, that they will be rooted and grounded in love and able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and that they might know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, and that they might be filled with all the fullness of God. I pray that their love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that they may approve things that are excellent that they would be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, that they be filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and the praise of God. And lastly, I desire that they be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, strengthened with all might according to your glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. And now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think, according to the power that works in me, unto you be the glory, Father in the church, at World Power Gospel Radio, at the Kingdom Seekers Radio Broadcast, in the lives of the people that I prayed for, in Jesus' name, amen. I want, I want all ministers of the gospel that are, I, know, I want everybody to do this, but particularly those that are in ministry, I thought about this just this morning, it is so important to learn from other men and women of God, that's what I do, I have, I'm under authority, I have a pastor, a senior pastor, Dr. Staples, I have apostolic Dalek, a government in my life. That's the Apostle Anthony T. Mays. I, I'm, I have instructors. I learn, folks. I just don't get this stuff out of thin air. I watch other men and women of God. I glean from them, then I put it into practice in my own life, particularly if they're getting results. Apostle Mays, how long have you been on radio? Uh, 11 years. Okay, 11 years. That's called results. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so he, has, he has establishment. So I can listen to him. He, ha he obviously knows something, right? <laughs> so it's not, it's not his first annual you know, WPGR radio show. So it's 11 years, and uh, he has much more years than that in ministry. 30, 30 uh, years in broadcasting. 30 years in broadcasting. So this is what I'm talking about. So listen to me. <laughs> I get results. And again, this is not about me. This is for you. Watch how I pray. Watch how I pray the word. Watch how I open up the broadcast. Watch how I stick with the message. You notice that I don't float around all over the place? Unless the Holy Ghost comes on me, then I won't even get to my notes. But most of the time, I, I, I stick with it. One man of God instructed me. He said, you stick with it till God gives you something else. Hence, we've been talking about kingdom principles or kingdom concepts. In other words, what the kingdom of God is and how it works in our lives. Real simple, real plain. This is not all that deep. There is a difference, I hope you're taking notes, between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Please write that down. There's a big difference. They're not interchangeable. They work together. There's a dual working. They work simultaneously. They run parallel with one another, but there is a difference. The kingdom of heaven is a place, P-L-A-C-E. It's an actual location, folks. The Apostle Paul talked about the third heaven. There's a place up there, um, a place where people live, where Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords, where his father, our father, sits upon a throne with his little gates made of, of pearls, and all types of fine stones. There's, there's, there's a river that's pure as gold. Glory to God. The Bible says that there's trees, that the very leaves have healing in them. Folks, it is righteousness, peace, and joy in a place called heaven. That is an actual location. Glory to God forevermore. And then the kingdom of God, listen to me carefully, it is God's government. Heaven's policies, its infrastructure, how the place runs, 
God's laws and precepts, everything about heaven and how it runs, being manifested here on earth. God, God's way of doing things is the best way I know how to say it. How God does things, how his kingdom operates. Jesus said that we should pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That backs up what I just said. We want the will of God in heaven to be manifested in earth, in our lives. I want kingdom results. I want to be in a position where there's no lack and no want and no sickness, where money's not an issue. No wonder the Bible said they have peace up there. That means that's the Hebrew word shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, all freedom from fear and agitating passion. They're not worried about where the next meal's coming from. None of that stuff. They have peace, glory to God. And the Bible says we should pray for that to be done on earth. I'm reminded of a scripture. I better turn to it because it just jumped up in my spirit. Now I haven't read it in Lord knows how long. But if the Holy Ghost said it's there, I'm assuming it's there. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And I hope I don't get embarrassed right here because I don't know. 11.22. I hope that's right. It was 11.12. Anyway, let's see. All right. I don't see it. Let's start 12. All right, I'm just going to quote it, and then one of you Bible scholars look it up for me. Apostle Mays is in the building. Maybe he has some type of equipment to find it. I was looking at 11.22. Oh, yeah, I did. It's 11.21. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen to what God is saying to the prophet Moses. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give them, here we go, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Did you hear what the Bible said? The days of heaven upon the earth. That's in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. You remember I said get your highlighter? See, I do the same thing you do. So I'm going to have to highlight verse 21. So the next time I come back, I know where it is. All you young ministers listening to me, you see how, we, how that works? Precept and example. You teach by precept an example. So I just highlighted it just like I asked you to do. So the days of heaven can be on earth. That's in the Bible. Glory to God forevermore. All right, go to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Let's read verse 12 and 13. I just left off in my prayer at verse 11. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience with long suffering and joyfulness. Let's continue reading verse 12 and 13. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power or the authority of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. And notice it's through the blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. I like to add on to that healing for our bodies and financial well-being. That's all included in our redemption. Let me give you scripture for that before we move on. Again, all ministers, always give people scripture. Don't just spot out a bunch of opinions and theology. Give them something to go back to. That the noble men and women that are listening can go back and search the things out and see if they're so. Give them something. All right. So, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ has redeemed us. Remember? In whom we have redemption. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. If you don't know what the curse of the law is, you'll go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 15 through 68. That's the curse of the law. When you read it, you'll find out it's every damnable thing to man. Spiritual death, sickness, poverty, all kind of stuff happens. Horrible stuff. But the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So we're redeemed. And then if you go to the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, the Apostle Peter gets really clear about it. when he says, you are not redeemed with corruptible things. There goes that word redeemed again. He says, but with the precious blood of Christ. So we know that it's the precious blood of Jesus that redeemed us from the curse of the law, redeemed us and given us forgiveness of sin, healing, and financial well-being. That belongs to us as citizens of the kingdom. I just gave you scripture for it. Look it up. Meditate on it. Feed upon it till it gets into your consciousness. All right. Let's go back to our first uh, concept that we talked about. And I think it's the most important one. And that is, know that you are a citizen of the kingdom. You have to know that. You have to know where you came from. When Jesus walked the earth, he talked about it all the time. He said, my, my, my kingdom is not from here. I'm in this world. I'm not of the world. Jesus talked like that all the time. He understood that, wait a minute, I'm from another place. 
I can call legions of angels and get out of this mess if I want to. See, he knew 